I am in a concert or military, and I should be with all those who couldn't be with us for whatever reason, and I should be with all those that have been affected by the, affected by the hurricane, and I ask that you be with us if we take up this offering and may it be used for your honor and glory, and I ask to be with the preacher to bring the message you have in the brain. And I ask this all in your holy name. Amen.
Thank you, Melissa. We're born to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Where do you find your comfort? Where do you find your comfort? During this storm, where do you find your comfort? What's that? In the Lord. That's right. You find your comfort in the Lord. So today we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, preacher, you got to talk about some kind of mystery. This is something you guys got to be careful, preacher, because this is something I don't understand. It's kind of myst mystical. You might have felt that way. I heard people think about the Holy Spirit. Some of they know about the Holy Spirit. They're scared to talk about the Holy Spirit because they've seen the Holy Spirit and the way other people have used the Holy Spirit. And it kind of scares people. And so today we've been studying about the Holy Spirit. Remember the disciples with Jesus at the last meal. And they were fixing to go to the garden and all this. We're after when Judas has already uh, dipped the, uh, Jesus dipped the, uh, the, the, what the bread into the juice. He gave it to Judas and he left and fled and left. And so, and Jesus says, I'm not going to be with you much longer. I'm leaving. Which the next day he dies on the cross. And so, people, the disciples were concerned and scared. And last week we talked about the questions that they had asked Jesus. And we'll be looking at some of that today. A bit of a question. But we all serve this. He said, I want to bring you some comfort. Isn't that a good to know you have some comfort? I was thinking about this this morning, about this hurricane Florence. We've been hearing about it for weeks and weeks, you know, or over a week's time, how severe and damn how it was going to come through and destroy the whole state. And we were concerned about our lives. You know, anybody concerned? But we don't, still don't know what's going to happen to this hurricane. It seems like it's just sitting along, taking two mile an hour winds, and just taking it creeping along. And it still hasn't really affected us like what we had thought. And it may, still may not, but it still may. There's a lot of bands of heavy rains coming. And so we're kind of. Uh, we hear about it, uh, we see reports about the hurricane, but we still not just know what the effects, what's going to happen. And sometimes that's where we, we approach the Holy Spirit. We know about the Holy Spirit. We know Jesus brought the Holy Spirit to comfort us and to encourage us and to help us. But we don't truly uh, understand or we, we kind of uh, limit the Holy Spirit. We kind of quench the Holy Spirit because we're scared of what we see in the extreme. When we see people running and jumping down the aisles and hitting people in the heads or handling snakes and stuff like that. And sometimes we go to the other extreme where we, 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 don't, we don't want anything to do with the Spirit. We, we won't do it all ourselves through Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to, there's a happy medium. We've got to be in the middle. We've got to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us in our walk. And there are going to be times when God does a supernatural miracle in our lives. There are times when God does... Miracles that are through natural means. Most times God does things through natural means. But there are times when God does things supernaturally and only God can do. And, you know, you know, such as bringing Lazarus from the dead as we study. That was something God wanted to do. God to be the dead, hell, and grave. And they were able to raise Lazarus. That's not something we can naturally do in the name of Jesus. It's supernatural. So in John chapter 14... If you were able to, able to stand on reading God's Word, we're going to verse 15 through 18 in John chapter 14. It says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth from the world cannot receive, because it is neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Let's pray. Oh, we come to you today. We thank you for being with us. Thank you for blessing us through song and through worship. And bless us through the reading of the words, through the teaching and preaching. May your spirit guide correctly today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We see this passage of Scripture and it says, If you love me, you keep my commandments. We talked about that a little bit last week. If you love the Lord, you will obey His Word. You will do what it says. Because you love Him, you will do what He tells you to do. And so, it tells us, those who believe in Him and who obey Him, God will provide a helper. That helper or that comforter, that will be the Holy Spirit. 
Okay? And so that's what we're talking about today, the Holy Spirit. Now, in the history of the note, it says this as well. It says, He may abide with you forever. Where Jesus was only there for three years for his twelve disciples, so he'll abide forever. The Spirit of truth. It says that the world cannot appear. The world cannot receive. You know why the Holy Spirit's mystical to a lot of people or question people who kind of are, don't really understand the Holy Spirit? Possibly because they don't know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, and therefore they don't obey the words of God and the teachings of God. And therefore, the things of God and the Holy Spirit and, and dwelling in people's lives sounds weird. It sounds strange. It sounds like you got a ghost inside of you. And so, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit is only a thing that we can understand through the teachings of God's Word and through the experience of God in our lives and the experience of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And therefore, we have the Spirit. As a matter of fact, Ephesians 5 18 says this. Do not be drunk with wine, wear in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And so we are to be filled with the Spirit, not to be uh, things of the world. And the world does not understand these things. He is uh, to be our comforter during times of trouble. He is to be our encourager. He is to be the one who convicts and corrects us in our time of need. John 14 is the, is the chapter of comfort. As we see here, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And then he talks about the disciples. He's talking about the 13 or 14. And so when he is still going away, we see that he brings a better choice. Now, the comforter is a third person of the Trinity. What is the Trinity? The Trinity is God the Father, Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit. Three in S, three in one, in S, three in the same in one. Alright? How do you understand that? I don't know. <laughs> but the Bible teaches it and we have to believe it. I can try to explain it and we try to teach it. Uh, when I teach kids in Awana or I teach uh, younger, uh, we used to teach youth, this is the best way I can explain it. If you take a, 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 a water, there's three forms of water. You have uh, gas, when you heat it up and boil it, it turns into vapor. You have the liquid that you drink, hopefully you drink enough of that each day, eight glasses a day, is that right? And then you have the ice cube that you freeze, when you freeze it. There are three different forms of water in the same, the same, okay? And so I'm trying to explain that, you know, trying to understand this. Now, do we ever understand everything? No, I don't either. Let me ask you this question. Do you understand how electricity works? How does power run through these lines across the road to get to your house and gives you juice to give you lights and air? Maybe you still have that day, hopefully. Do we understand it completely? Some people may, because it may be in that field, but we just believe it and we see it, all right? I mean, it's about Wi-Fi. How does Wi-Fi work? How do you use a, a computer to do internet and there's no cables, no connections? All there's is signals flying all over the place. I wonder what kind of signals going through my head, you know, kind of <laughs> all these. How does it work? I wonder what it works, right? Sometimes we just believe things. What about how does a brown cow eat green grass and get white meal? <laughs> How does a brown cow eat green grass and get white meat? Don't know. We just we just get to heaven, etc. Right? Same with the Holy Spirit. We can't truly understand the Holy Spirit completely. We just have to believe it by faith and see the evidence of the things of Take your hand. I do this often. You've probably have done this before. If you've been here long enough, hold it up for me. Say amen. Don't get Pentecostal on me. <laughs> All right. Now take the hand in front of your mouth and breathe. What did you feel? Air. air. Right. You didn't see the air, did you? But you felt the air. We don't see the Holy Spirit. We feel the Holy Spirit in us. The presence of God. And so the Holy Spirit can sometimes be a mystical 
explain to people. But in reality, the Holy Spirit is our helper, our comfort during the time to be. First John 5, 7 says this. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, because He has been beginning with the Word, or was God, or was God, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. All right? Now, so we have to believe in the Trinity of Scriptures, of the Bible. There are three. Now, most Christians believe in Calvary. We believe that we that Jesus died for our sins. And we that he saved us. Alright? And then there's some who um, don't understand the ascension of Pentecost. We we are okay with accepting Christ, saving us, but Understanding how the Pentecost happened, how God spoke, and everybody in the, in the, in the area, in Jerusalem, and Jesus, Peter spoke, and everybody heard the same language, and heard the, the gospel being shared. They went back to other people and told them they were uh, from many languages. And so we kind of think, think of this Jesus was born as a virgin, therefore, God is with us. Okay? God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. On the Christ, God died. For us, but that day of Pentecost, God dwelt within us. So Christ died for us. Christ was with us as when He walked on this earth, and also Christ dwells within us. Which is which is greater? To, to walk with Jesus for three that three years and to be gone, or to have the Spirit of God in us and God won't bless forever. I hope that we choose the latter. Therefore, the Spirit of God matters. All right. You see, the disciples walked with Jesus. He had this good understanding of what they did that. When we have the Holy Spirit within us, we don't necessarily understand the Holy Spirit completely. Sometimes we quench the Spirit, as it says in uh, 1 Thessalonians. Now look at verse 17. The Bible says in verse 17, it says this, The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He who dwells within you will be in you. Here's the thing. In order to have the Spirit in you, you must be saved. It's for the Christian only. It's not for a person who puts on the Christian outside image. The Spirit will in us when we accept Christ and give our life to Him. When we ask for Him to save us, but also to be the Lord of us to lead us on our daily journey, our walk, before we enter heaven when our time comes. So, uh, we are oftentimes afraid of the Spirit because of what we said, like I said, the people who, who Misuse the spirit. Sometimes we think of the Holy those who use the Spirit are kind of strange. We think of those preachers who give you the holy water and the rags and they want you to give a thousand dollars for this or that. And the Spirit of God told me to tell you to do it. You know, or we have these uh, uh, people who uh, ladies who uh, just you know just, just kind of fake. You know what I'm saying? Not really genuine. What, does the Spirit dwell in us and, and, and them not in us? The Spirit dwells in all of us. This is how we allow the Spirit to use, be used in us. Do we trust the Spirit in our daily walk? Or do we do what we want to do? And so we want to look at this a little bit today and understand this. And um, we all have the Spirit if we're saved. Amen? At the point of salvation, we accept Christ. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. He's there to comfort us and to guide us and wreck us. But it's from that point on that we either trust the Spirit or not. Let me give you the first point. The identity of the Spirit. The identity of the Spirit. There are no less than 40 ministries of the Spirit which performs in our lives. Okay, I'm going to give you seven of those. Just to kind of briefly kind of give you the identity of what the Holy Spirit, who He is. He explains the Bible to us, first of all, in 1 Corinthians 2.14. Bible says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 
Basically, the Holy Spirit helps us understand the Scriptures. We have trouble. Uh, people who read the, the Word of God just for, for, for who are not Christians, who read for, for leisure or just want to understand what the Scriptures say, they look at it and say, it don't make any sense. But when God, gets, when a believer reads the Word of God, the Holy Spirit teaches and, and shows us and leads us to understand the parables and teachings of Jesus and the other things to explain the Scriptures to us. Also, the Holy Spirit allows us to give us assurance of salvation. Do you ever doubt your salvation? Do you ever kind of wonder if you're saved? And you're like, well, I want to make sure I'm saved. I, I pray the prayer and I, I, I really love the Lord. I believe but Sometimes I just, some days I just feel like I'm, I'm not saved. Maybe that's the Holy Spirit. Maybe that's the devil kind of getting in your head and trying to make you think you feel uh, defeated and not victorious, and therefore uh, you feel down and out and unable to be used by God in a great way. But God gives us the Holy Spirit to assure us of salvation. Romans 8 16 says this The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. If we experience the Holy Spirit in our lives, we experience the effects of the Holy Spirit, we see the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, that's found in Galatians chapter 5, gentleness and self-control, we have those things that the Spirit kind of helps us. The Holy Spirit assures us that we are children of God because when Satan attacks us, he's going to try to make you feel like you're not saved. We also see here the Holy Spirit intercedes for us when we pray. When we feel like we've not prayed enough, we're praying the same prayers and start getting from here to there, God and His Holy Spirit intercedes. What it says here, verse 1 is 826. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know that we should what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groans which cannot be uttered. There are times when you want to pray to God, you just don't know what to pray. God knows your heart. The Spirit knows your heart. And the Holy Spirit intercedes on your behalf and helps you through those times of prayer. And also, the Holy Spirit leads us to, and directs us. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. That's the fourth one there. Leads us and directs us. Number five. He empowers us to witness Oh, you ever get scared of witnessing? The Bible teaches us to be a witness. We should share our faith. Oh. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Go out there these doors. All of a sudden, I'm running to somebody. I'm like, okay, now how about Jesus? How do I do that? How do I do that? Okay. And we stick our tail between our legs and we run, right? The Holy Spirit gives us strength to do it. Once we listen to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit says, all right, do it. We start doing it. All of a sudden, the Spirit gives us words to speak. Acts 1 8 says this. It says, for us, it says, but you shall receive power. That word power is dynamite. It gives us power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be my witness to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other parts of the earth. That was a different point Peter. When Peter was stuck his foot about many times around Jesus, over and over and over. But when Jesus went and sent him to heaven, the Holy Spirit came at the Pentecost. Peter began to preach the gospel from beginning to end. And all of a sudden, 3,000 souls were saved. He would God used him in a mighty way because the Holy Spirit gave him power to share and to speak the words that he would have to say. Also, we know that the Holy Spirit strengthens us against temptation. If you ever get tempted, we can be strengthened. First Corinthians 10 13. No temptation is overtaking you except such as the common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Oh, the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear. You ever get tempted to do something? God is going to provide a way for the Holy Spirit to help you through that temptation and help you how to flee from that temptation. When the Holy Spirit guides, leads, directs. Then the last was today's verses. He comforts us. He comforts us. In John 14, 16. I will pray to the Father, He will give you another helper to abide with you forever. So we see the identity here, but he's our comforter, and he takes care of us. God comforts not only our sues, our, 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 when, we, when we're injured or hurt, but he strengthens us. Let me think, think of this. As growing up, maybe as a parent, you had your child, or you as a child, 
You scratch your knee riding a bicycle or something. Who do you go to? Who? Mom. Mama. <clears throat> Want mama to do what? Kiss it. Now, did germs help? <laughs> it makes you feel better, doesn't it? It soothes, it comforts. But the Holy Spirit does this, but even right on, it doesn't soothe and comforts, but it, it strengthens you. It, it, it uh, uh, makes you better. It not only consoles you, like the mother does, but the Holy Spirit controls the situation. Not only does it give it comfort, but it gives courage. It gives you courage what to say, what to do. And so, uh, Mama's a great uh, medicine for a boo-boo. But the Holy Spirit is, is the key to glue as a Christian for our time of trouble. Now the word here, comforter, which we have in this, this scripture, this, this, this passage, we get the word paraclete. Paraclete, and which means to come alongside. And so this helper is to give support and comfort. Because here is Jesus, he's leaving them. But he's giving someone to help them, support them. And he's going to be the well within them, not beside them. He's also the Holy Spirit, not was a comforter, but he was an advocate. An advocate in a sense. Look at uh, 1 John 2 1 says this. This is the same word. Same word, paraclete, is the same word we had the word for advocate. My children, these things I write to you that you do not sin. If any of you miss sin, we'll have an advocate with the Father. And so this advocate is, is Jesus, the Holy Spirit, who is with us. Who speaks on our behalf when we see it and uh, will help us. <clears throat> Anybody heard of R.A. Torrey? He's a great preacher. He actually followed the footsteps of uh, D.L. Moody in Chicago. And uh, he as a parent who lost a child at age nine. She so lost a daughter named Elizabeth. And basically a friend had taken her to the zoo and she ended up getting sick and ended up getting uh, a disease uh, that, that was very contagious back then, uh, diphtheria. And when she was contagious, they had to they basically affect everybody else. And therefore the once she passed away, which was a difficult time, and she didn't need any comfort. They also had to lose their home because they had to just fumigate and all this, to give her the germs. Uh, they had to go to a cold, dark room hotel where the rain was in a dark, gloomy kind of their life. But he decided to go to the church to study and take his mind off things. And as he walked to the office, he collapsed in the street under the weight of his burden and began to cry. Uncontrollably. He was inconsolable. Ms. Moment felt like something was coming over him, and he said the Holy Spirit became more real to him in that moment than ever before in his life. When he needed encouragement, when he needed comfort, when he needed uh, help, the Spirit was there. And he wrote this letter. He wrote this letter over the line. He said, Just then, this found in the Holy Spirit. That I had in my heart broke forth with such power that I think I have never experienced before. It was the most joyful moment I had ever known in my life. Oh, how wonderful is the joy of the Holy Spirit. It's unspeakable, glorious thing to have your joy and not in things, not even the most dearly loved friend, but in the one who has a found goodness, which brings up forever eternally to the Lord. Everlasting. Let me ask this question. In your most darkest times, difficult times, do you feel the Holy Spirit comfort you? Yes, you have friends to console you. Yes, you have family. But here he experienced a great joy despite the circumstances. How does the Spirit have joy despite the circumstances and troubles and hardships? The Holy Spirit. Speaks, encourages, dwells, helps. Now, another thing to notice in this verse, verse 17, the Holy Spirit mentioned five times we use the pronoun, the word he or him. Therefore, we know that the Holy Spirit is a person, not an it. How many times do we ever say it? Say it. 
sometimes when you're running growing up, they say the Holy Spirit is it, it, it's, it's here. I feel the Holy Spirit. It's a He. It's a person. And so, uh, we're part of the Trinity. Now, we see the identity of the Spirit. Let's look at the indwelling of the Spirit as we wrap this up this morning. And we'll go about the Holy Spirit next week and the rest of the following the pursuing passages of the Scriptures because the Holy Spirit is going to be understanding more about this and about the Holy Spirit in our lives. Look at verse 17, the indwelling in the Holy Spirit. The last part of that verse says, But you know him, for he dwells with, with you and will be in you. Think about this. The Holy Spirit being within us can be an exciting, encouraging thing, or it can also be a negative thing. You think, preacher, how can it be a negative thing? How can it be an encouraging thing? Think about this. What you see, He sees. What we listen to, He is subject to. What we experience, He experiences. What we do, we force Him to tag along and do it with us. Now, if we look at our lives, and we look at our journey, look at our days and our weeks, can we say that the Holy Spirit was grieved or, or uh, what's the opposite? The uh, Holy Spirit uh, was a part of the blessing of your journey that day. What you what you see, he sees. Would he be happy? You know that expression, what would Jesus do? That's kind of like, what would this Holy Spirit do? What would Jesus do? See, well, we're we're walking a testimony for God. We're, we 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 are if we have Jesus Christ, we are alive in the world, therefore we are alive, we're part of the gospel, the gospel within us, the Holy Spirit within us. Are we perfect? No. Is your pastor perfect? No. We're not perfect. We fail, we make mistakes. But with the Holy Spirit, we hopefully, the Holy, we listen to the Holy Spirit, and therefore we shy away from the things we should not go, the places that we, the things that we see, the things that we do. And therefore, we want to do the things that the Holy Spirit wants us to do because we love God, what God has done for us. God is not what God says. You can do this, not do this. There's nothing to the do's and don'ts and rules and regulations. People always think that God, God is mean. He wants you to do this and do not do this. There's a bunch of commandments. Do this, don't do this. Do this, do this. I want to enjoy life. Listen to me. You can't enjoy life without Christ, the mind of life. God puts us, wants to protect you. And He puts boundaries around us to keep us from experiencing pain experiencing trouble, experiencing baggage. And when we are, obey the words of God and listen to the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can experience freedom in our life. We can experience an abundant life, a life that God has designed that we should have experienced since the Lord of Eden, that we'll experience again one day in heaven, but even greater. You see, the Holy Spirit is there to comfort us, to guide us, to encourage us, to correct us, to help us in our journey every day. It's not to be a mystical thing or some kind of a, a scary thing. Now, there are times when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of us and speaks to us. Matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 14, 13, 14, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And one of those is tongues. And it is mentioned that there's other gifts that are mentioned of the uh, uh, that Paul talks about. And so sometimes we we take those extremes that do happen. There's times that do happen that we, people experience. But we think we have to have that. No. I can experience the power and presence of the Holy Spirit of God direct me and experience. There are times I want to raise money and say, Amen, praise the Lord, preacher. Amen. Don't do that. Y'all are scared to do that, aren't you? Sometimes you're scared. Sometimes you hold your hand like, I, I want to raise my hand. I want to say Amen, but I can't because I let everybody look at me funny. Listen. Maybe the Spirit says to you today, I mean, maybe God, maybe you are worshiping God, you're singing a song, get your eyes closed, and you just sit there and listen, sing it to the Lord, worshiping Him. That's the Spirit within us. If you want to run down the south, praise me. Lord God, do it. Don't look for show. Don't look for, don't look to look good. 
I want you to worship God. I want you to experience the power of the Holy Spirit and allow the Spirit to guide and direct. We don't have to have the supernatural miracles in our lives to fill the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit. But He does love in us. And the person who has the Holy Spirit does have the fruits of the Spirit. Love. You have love. You have joy. Peace. Peace of mind. Patience. You have kindness. Goodness. Gentleness. Self-control. These things that the Holy Spirit helps us on our walk. Because in our human flesh, we fail in all those areas. The Spirit of God is with us. God is with us. In us. Think about that. We always say, what would it have been like if God was with us? Who had been in the presence of Jesus those three years? But He's been with us. The problem is, we, don't, we, we put it on a shelf. Don't we? Sunday morning, hey, Jesus, come on down, come with me to church. Monday morning, we put it back on the shelf. And, okay, I'll be back in a little while, Jesus. You can't go with me here. I don't want you to go with me here. No, I've got to do my own thing here. But I'll, I'll, I'll come back and pray with you tonight. Right? We use God as a spare tire. You know what a spare tire is? It's that thing that works when, you, when your tire goes out and then your spare tire is flat because you didn't check it before. Listen, the Spirit is here to dwell with us. Not to be scared of it. Scared of Him, excuse me, of, of Him. But we allow the Spirit to work in our lives. Because God wants us to be comfortable during times of trouble. When you go through this storm of life, you go know, through this hurricane, you're scared that your house is going to fall over, you're going to lose power, trees going to fall over, a power line, or whatever's going to happen to you. You can just trust Jesus, trust the Holy Spirit. And you've got, the Holy Spirit gives you peace. And know that God is going to watch out. going to carry me through. Because we worry. Us, us people, we worry too much. The Bible says not to worry. You know why we don't have to worry? Because Jesus is with us. He'll never leave us for the this morning, we ask this question. Do you have the Holy Spirit within your life? In order to have the Holy Spirit, you've got to be saved. Do you know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior? If you don't know Christ is Lord and Savior today, today is the day of salvation. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, if you're holding on tight to your pew, or you kind of, you, you've got God's coming to come, but you just thought, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. No, it's the Spirit talking to you. And God is saying, come, give me your life. But if you don't know it, that's when you're clinching the Spirit. Come today. Maybe you're here today and you go Christ, but you don't have the Spirit to be Lord of your life to lead you guide and direct. Pray to God, allow God to use you, the wealth within you, and use you every day. And listen to the Spirit of God. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you again for being with us today. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you are with us. You dwell in us. And you help us on our daily walk each and every day. God, we pray that you be with us today. May your spirit God pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand? The altar's over here. We all care. The Lord is speaking to you. The Spirit is speaking to you today. Come. You got a prayer? If I can pray with you. Join the church and baptize. Make a decision for the Lord that I This is the Spirit.